In this experiment, we're going to see what happens when we're pushing a digital recording device to its limits. That is, trying to sample a signal with a higher frequency than the Nyquist frequency. First, let's take a look at the specifications used for the recordings in this experiment. The specifications are the same as that of a conventional CD recording. The sample frequency is 44,100 Hz and the resolution is 16 bits. The recording device used for the experiment is the Zoom H6. Before the experiment starts, the basics of digital sampling will be explained. The drawing with the pencil represents the signal that you want to sample. The red dots represent the sample points, which are the points of the analog signal that the analog to digital converter registers and saves. The signal can later be recreated using a digital to analog converter. The Nyquist frequency is the maximum frequency that the recorder can sample correctly. It is defined as the sampling frequency of the recorder divided by 2. Thus, the frequency of the signal must be lower than the Nyquist frequency. At the Nyquist frequency, only two sample points will be collected per cycle. Let's start the experiment. Signals of different frequencies will be fed to the recorder using a function generator. The recordings will then be played and displayed on the oscilloscope. We start with a sinusoid with a frequency of 2 kHz. The recordings will be displayed on the left and the reference signal will be displayed on the right. As we see, the sinusoid looks correct at 2 kHz. Let's move on to 10 kHz. 10 kHz also looks correct. 20 kHz. Now we are close to the Nyquist frequency, and still the recorder displays a good sinusoid. This is probably due to a filter that makes sure that the output signal is continuous. Now we are moving on to 23 kHz, which is just above the Nyquist frequency. We immediately get heavy distortion. Let's move on to 30 kHz. Finally, 40 kHz. This distortion is due to severe aliasing. Aliasing occurs when the recorder tries to record a signal with a higher frequency than the Nyquist frequency. Since the recorder cannot record anything above the Nyquist frequency, it thinks that it recorded something below the Nyquist frequency, and thereby displaying the wrong signal when trying to recreate it. Now the tests will be done again, but with a square wave instead of a sinusoid. At 2 kHz, the recorder displays a signal that clearly resembles a square wave, although it is not perfect. The recreated square wave has oscillations on each peak. A square wave can be represented using an infinite sum of sinusoids. A sinusoid with the base frequency is chosen, then every odd harmonic is added. Since the recorder cannot record on all frequencies, only a finite number of sinusoids will be present, and therefore the square wave will only be partially recreated. 10 kHz here the recorder displays something that does not resemble a square wave whatsoever. This could be considered a problem since we are well within the hearing range. For the following frequencies the problems are the same as for the sinusoid. In conclusion, even though frequencies above 23 kHz is impossible for humans to hear, they still cause a great deal of distortion when present upon recording. Also, it seems impossible for the recorder to recreate an accurate square wave, even well within the hearing range.